Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred. And on this episode of Come to the Library, I am going to highlight this book, Internal Family Systems Skills Training Manual, compiled by Frank Anderson, Martha Sweezy, and Richard Schwartz himself. And this book is full of sample IFS sessions that illustrate certain skills for practitioners. And so I think this will be really valuable, whether you are an IFS practitioner or you are someone who's receiving IS, IFS therapy or doing it on yourselves. Um, the example I'm going to share with you today is on page 43. And it's a wonderful example of externalizing parts which can be really helpful in order to get enough distance between ourself and the part from which to relate to it. Um, some people visualize their parts and they can kind of sense them in or around their body and, and create enough space from which to relate to them. But other people who don't visualize can be really valuably supported by having anything from rocks to pillows to stuffed animals to little toy figurines to peg dolls to buttons um anything uh, that can kind of represent the different parts so you can differentiate them and relate to them okay so this example is from a client named tom tom grew up in a low income income housing project he was the youngest of three boys his mother worked two jobs. His father, an alcoholic who worked for the postal service, came home only now and then. When he did, Tom's mother fought with him verbally and sometimes physically until he left again. In the rare times that Tom encountered his father sober, he saw a cold, anxious man who would not touch him. In contrast, his drunken father, whom he saw most often, was funny and affectionate. Meanwhile, Tom's older siblings and other kids in the neighborhood picked on Tom because he was small for his age. When Tom came for therapy, he was on disability. He had been clean from heroin for four years, and he dressed as if he were a member of a motorcycle gang. Tom came to therapy because his psychiatrist asked him to. He often came late, frequently missing half of the session. He felt overwhelmed by the alcohol counseling training program that he was taking. And because he was struggling with urges to use, he was afraid that if he went to AA or NA, he would make connections to score drugs. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, part that feared that. His parts would not unblend. So most sessions involve the therapist using direct access to speak to his parts. After three months, uh, just a side note, if you don't know what direct access is, it's um, when essentially the self in the system is always the healing agent. So if there's not, if there's such big protectors in the person that there's not an available uh, amount of self energy within them, the, the therapist or practitioner's self acts as the self in the system. So they may the, the practitioner will know, oh, I'm talking to the part who gives the urge to use. I'm talking to the part who's afraid to go to AA because the, the using part might make connections. Or I'm talking to the part that creates this rough exterior or whatever it may be. So direct access is when the practitioner's self talks to the parts of the client. So it sounds like uh, the therapist had to do a lot of that. Um, okay. So after three months, it says, he said he felt worse after sessions and wasn't sure that continuing was a good idea because the urge to use heroin, heroin just kept getting stronger. Another little side note, this can often happen once the system opens a little bit and creates room for some of the pain to come up, the firefighters and other parts might backlash. They might get bigger. Um, so this, this binging, numbing heroin part 
uh, is a firefighter and it wants to numb all that pain. So if in therapy, it even sees the prospect of that pain coming up, the firefighter may get bigger, right? So it's really important to befriend that part. Okay, so it starts with the therapist saying, thank you for letting me know, Tom. Um, can we go over all of this? In sessions, we talk to the part who wants you to go to a meditation center, the part who makes you sleep all day, the part who thinks you will flunk classes, and the part who eats a lot of junk food. They all think that you are the lonely kid who struggles in school and gets teased by other kids. And they don't believe that there's a Tom in there who has internal strength that's not a part, right? Tom nods. So meanwhile, the guy who uses heroin tells you that he knows how to stop all this. And that's a sure bet. He's done it before. I have a question for him. Would he be willing to try something new first? If he's willing, I want him to be the first to meet you, the Tom who's not a part. So Tom is silent, looking out the window for a few minutes. And then he says, reluctantly. Um, so <laughs> it's like, so you're saying there's a chance, right? So um, even you don't have to get complete buy-in from parts. Even if they're reluctant, they have concerns, as long as they have any kind of willingness, if they're giving consent, essentially, to say, okay, I will try this, right? So the therapist pulls out two small tables in front of his chair and places a tray of toy figures on the table, on the tables. And then the therapist says, ask the heroin using part to pick someone from here to represent him. So there's a bunch of these kind of like little toy figures, right? Tom looks at the figures carefully. They run the gamut from monsters to baby animals to kids and human babies. He picks a monster figure with its big mouth wide open and its arms looming in the air to intimidate. Tom says, this is him. The therapist says, put him on the table wherever he wants to be. So he puts him on the table. And the therapist says, how do you feel toward him, Tom? Tom says, he scares me. And I like him a lot. So <laughs> there's a couple parts present in response to, to the heroin part. The therapist says, let both of those parts pick figures to represent them too. So the part that's afraid and the part that, that likes the heroin part. So Tom picks out two figures, a lamb and a tall female whose limbs are sewed on. She looks like a cross between Frankenstein and a zombie. So the therapist continues. Where do they want to be while you talk to him? That's a good question. So again, we're externalizing the parts and really... Um, putting them in space kind of where they want to be. Uh, Tom says, this one wants to be behind me. And he puts the lamb out of sight behind his back on the chair. So sometimes, especially fearful parts might want to be out of sight of the part that they're afraid of. They might want to go to another room. They might want to just be tucked away, you know, in a pocket or in your hand. Again, whatever they want. Tom continues. This one wants to be right next to him. So Tom places the female Frankenstein zombie next to the monster. See, already this is giving so much information. And the great thing is that because these parts are externalized in kind of this small figure form, um, it helps lend a little bit of self energy because Tom himself, who's not a part, can feel bigger than them, right? This monster that looks very scary and probably is very intimidating on the inside you reduced it now to a small figure now you can relate to it right and there's a part who loves it that wants to be right next to it part who fears it who's going behind tom's back so the therapist asks now how do you feel toward the heroin guy so the therapist has gotten tom's parts that 
we're blended with him and reacting to separate now, um, to unblend. So it's checking for self energy again. Tom says, sad. He's done a lot of damage, but I know that he was just trying to help. The therapist says, how does he respond to that? So it sounds like Tom is, is actually in quite a bit of self, self energy. Sometimes sadness is not self and sometimes it is. Sometimes sad is a way of expressing compassion. Like, wow, I see how hard he has worked and that he's trying to help even though he's created a lot of damage. So there's a, a lot of understanding in, in Tom now. So the therapist asks, how does he respond? And Tom says, he's puzzled. He doesn't know who I am. And that makes sense because he likely often either deals with the parts who really like him or the parts who really hate him and fear him. And so he doesn't know who, who Tom's self is. So the therapist says, he might be interested to know that you can help the part that he protects. Tom says, he says, I've done a crappy job so far. And the therapist says, you might be interested in this too. When a part takes you over, you can't be there to help. For you to be able to help, everyone has to agree to give you room. Would he be willing to go first? If any other part steps in, we'll ask them to make room for you too. So this is an interesting um, place in, in therapy where a part expresses like, I don't trust you. You haven't been here for me uh, in the past, um, or you haven't been able to help what I protect in the past. So I've seen different approaches here and there's really no right or wrong. Um, I think both can be in self, but one is to apologize and say, you are right. That, that has to validate, right? That has happened and I'm so sorry that I was not able to be there in the past. You're right about that. But I am here now and I wanna be here now and I wanna gain your trust. What what would you like me to do? Is there anything I can do to gain your trust? Um, another another way to move, the, and this is what this therapist is doing, is to explain to the part when you say, you know, you were never able to be with or heal the exile in the past, they're really, pointing at other parts because Tom's system was always dominated by other parts. And it's right. Those parts were not able to be uh, with, with that. So it, it depends how much psychoeducation, I guess you want to give to the part. Um, if the part is open to understanding, I like to give understanding because um, maybe speak, maybe I'm <laughs> projecting. I have a lot of parts who really appreciate understanding why, right? And understanding that nuance of it wasn't the self who couldn't be there for the exile. It was these other parts that were blended. But when the parts are able to relax enough, the self will naturally come out. And then you can meet that one that's not a part that can help. And I get that you don't trust this yet. You have to gain evidence of it. But in order for it to happen, you and all the other parts will need to relax a little bit. Are you willing to, to be the first one to do that? Okay, so then Tom's response is, he wonders what your game is. Okay, so he's still not trusting, which makes sense. And he's not trusting the therapist, right? The therapist says, okay, that's a fair question. Let him know that we are not trying to get rid of him. My goal is for all your parts to feel better, including him. He could quit all this and do something else, whatever he wanted. Would he like that? Okay, so the, the therapist here, again, is validating the concern of the part. I get that you don't trust me. And kind of intuiting, maybe there's a fear that that part is going to, that we're trying to get rid of that part. And it doesn't, it can't stop doing its job until what it protects is healed. So it's like, what's your game? Don't try to get rid of me. <laughs> You're not going to be able to do it. So it kind of validates that, not trying to get rid of you. Um, I'm, I'm trying to help the whole system feel better, including you. What if you could rest? What if I could help or 
the client's self could help this part um, that you protect. Would you like that? Tom says he might. And the therapist says, would he let us show him what's possible? So the therapist is being this hope merchant. There is a reality in which the part you protect can be taken care of and healed by someone who's capable inside that can do that. Then you can rest and you can do whatever you want. Are you willing for me to show you this? Are you willing to gain evidence? Uh, <clears throat> Tom says, he'll give it a shot as long as we know that he, as long as we know that he's not going anywhere. Yes. Therapist says, great. Do we have his permission to ask who needs your attention first? And Tom says, yes. Great. Okay. So in this um, example, it's so wonderful because in order to help Tom unblend from some of his parts, they used these figurines so that Tom could first unblend from the parts that had reaction and then relate to the critic and receive answers from him. It sounds like maybe for one of the first times um, in, in his, his therapy work. And so now it's his self and the therapist self interacting with him, giving him hope, proposing small experiments because he has to gain evidence first. Um, there's a final note here that says, by finding and focusing on his vulnerable part and exile, as well as his very wary heroin using protector, a firefighter, Tom was able to help the latter part begin to differentiate, which helped him befriend it and get his permission to proceed. Always want to get the permission of, of all the protective parts really um, to go toward what they, they protect. And they often need to be assured that you're not trying to get rid of them, that the self who's not a part has the capacity to be with even very big emotions in the exile, um, that they can titrate their energy. You got to meet whatever concerns they have and not proceed forward until their concerns are met. And you can tell at the end that this part is guiding the way. Yes, this is a confident, yes, you can go uh, I'll let you know who needs your attention. Um, and the last paragraph says, as this vignette illustrates, externalizing parts encourages them to unblend and notice the client's self. IFS therapists often find ways to suit themselves as they get creative with externalizing strategies. Other options may include colorful scarves, pillows of various shapes and sizes, stuffed animals, paper plates, on which parts identities can be written. Uh, you can do drawings. Like I said, you can do rocks, buttons, sticks, um, anything that represents the parts. When it comes to externalizing parts, we have the opportunity to be creative and invent new options. Um, also makes me think of the Gestalt method where you can imagine that different parts are sitting in different chairs or different places around the room. Um, sometimes I'll just have a client on a piece of paper, you, they can draw a circle and say, okay, this is, this is where this part is. This is where this part wants to be. Um, maybe this is where I am or, you know, something like that. Uh, but, but they are here in their body relating to the parts. Uh, so anything like that, that, that helps you externalize, um, in, in the weekly IFS community group we have several people who don't visualize their parts. And sometimes we'll do a meditation that kind of lends itself to visualization. Like we're meeting with the parts around a campfire. And um, what I encourage the people who don't visualize to do is to, you know, have a, I don't know, <laughs> have a highlighter in the middle. Like this is the campfire. And then you can grab little things around you. You can grab different pens, right? Or whatever you have will work. Um, you know, if you have little things, you can put it around. Okay, this is this part and that's what it's saying. And this is this part having a reaction. And to be able to see the system and how it's related in space is actually really, really helpful. One last uh, helpful thing that uh, 
you might appreciate is these interactive cards. This can also help unblend and, and relate to parts. So they're just they're just images that are on these cards. Like there's this, you know, the superhero guy. There's a, a manager kind of guy with a bullhorn. Um, someone who, who looks kind of dejected and despair. Um, there's kind of a superhero heroine, um, kind of a very primal figure, very busy workaholic, uh, looks like caretaking part there. Um, it, male, female, uh, maybe gender identity part, um, <laughs> burnt out, depressed part, maybe anyway, there, there's a whole slew of them. And so you can have the part pick out the image that represents how they feel and represents them in some way. And then you can put the cards around, have them, you know, communicate with each other, listen to them, communicate with them. So that's another, another option, but there's, yeah, seriously, get creative, do whatever your system finds helpful and experiment, right? Try things and see if it works. And if your system likes it, you can keep it for however long they like it. And if they don't like it, you don't have to do it. You can try something else. Uh, it's okay for your system to be different than other people's systems. So I hope you appreciated that example. Um, if you have, if you want to share anything in the comments about how you externalize your parts, if you have any ideas or if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.